Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss one very nice question on capacitance from May June 2022, paper 4, variant 2. In this lesson, we will talk about how to calculate combined capacitance of capacitors connected in series and also how to calculate combined capacitance of capacitors connected in parallel. We will also discuss how to calculate energy stored in a capacitor and also we will discuss how to calculate discharging time for a capacitor. So these concepts are very important to understand this topic and we will discuss all these concepts in today's lesson by solving past paper questions. Let's study together, let's improve together. For our question number 5, part A, we need to define capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. And this question is very common in past papers. You need to understand how to define capacitance in a proper way. This is a typical type of question. You will see this question in many past papers. Let's try to define capacitance in a right way. First thing we need to understand, Q is equal to C times V. From here, we can write down C is equal to Q over V. And Q is the charge on one plate, on one plate. Actually, this charge is the net charge on one plate. So simply, you can say charge on one plate. So very important, this point you have to mention in your answer. And V is the potential difference across plates. So this is the PD across plates, mean the potential difference across plates across plates. Now, one thing you also need to understand, C does not depend on Q, C does not depend on V. C depends on physical properties of capacitor. C is equal to K times epsilon naught A over T. C depends on area of the plate, C depends on dielectric constant, and C depends on separation between plates. D is the separation between plates. C does not depend on Q, C does not depend on V. It simply means that if you increase charge on the plates, V means the potential difference across plates will also increase. I mean, if you increase net charge on one plate, potential difference between plates will also increase. And vice versa is also true. If you decrease Q, V will also decrease. Let me sketch parallel plate capacitor here so you can see how it looks like. So this is parallel plate capacitor it means simply we have two plates and q let's say the net charge on this plate is plus q and the net charge on this plate is minus q so this q is the charge on one plate only but the net charge negative q is equal to positive q we simply separate charges in capacitor so this is net charge on one plate this is net charge on and other plate and v is the potential difference between these two plates. Simply, you can draw your voltmeter here. So, V is the potential difference between these two plates. And this is the separation. D is the separation between plates. We can label this one as D. And area of the plate. A is area of plate. Area of one plate. So, this is area of one plate. We are talking about parallel plate capacitor. So, this is what you need to understand about capacitance. Now, let me show you the answer, how you can write down the answer. This is how you can write down your answer. You can simply mention capacitance is equal to charge over potential difference and charge is charge on one plate and potential is potential difference across the plates. This one has one mark, M mark. If you have written this charge over potential difference, you will get M mark. Then the second, if you have defined what is charge, what is V, you will get the second mark and second mark is answer mark. This is how marks will be awarded for this question. For part B, it is given to us two capacitors of capacitance C1 and C2 are connected in parallel to a power supply of electromotive force capital E as shown in figure 5.1. For part B, we need to show that combined capacitance CT of two capacitors is given by CT is equal to C1 plus C2. We also need to explain our reasoning means we need to show our working and it is also given to us. We can draw on figure 5.1 if we wish, but this part is optional. Now let's try to understand, first of all, what is the potential difference across C1 and C2? If we connect the voltmeter here, Let's say we connect voltmeter.
capacitor V1 across capacitor C1. So the reading of this voltmeter will be equal to capital E because it is just connected across terminals of power supply and this power supply has no internal resistance. We are talking about ideal battery and same if we connect a voltmeter across the second capacitor let's say this voltmeter is V2 and this one is V1. So the reading on this voltmeter also will be equal to E. It simply means that the potential difference across these two capacitors is the same. Now let's try to understand how we can calculate charge on these two capacitors. Q is equal to CV. Let's say this is capacitor 1. So Q1 in this case simply will be equal to C1 times E. And Q2 in this case will be equal to C2 times E because Q is equal to CV. Now we need to understand what is the total charge stored on these two capacitors. So we can write down total charge Q total. Q total simply will be equal to Q1 plus Q2. Now we can sub these values means we can replace Q1 with C1E and we can replace Q2 with C2E and we can also write down the total charge on these two capacitors that one will be equal to C total times E C total times E now in this case you can see E is common so we can rewrite this we can write down CTE this one is equal to E times C1 plus C so E is common on both sides, simply we can cancel. So our final answer means the value of C total will be equal to C1 plus C2. So this is what we need to derive, and this is our final answer. If you have written this one, you will get in this case three marks. The first mark you will get if you have written the potential difference across each capacitor is equal to E, you will get one mark. That is one B mark. And the second B mark you will get if you have written this step, you will get second B mark. And third B mark you will get if you have got the right answer. So this one is third B mark if you have got this right answer. This is how marks will be awarded. So you need to understand when capacitors are connected in parallel, imagine that we have these two capacitors. This is one capacitor, this is another capacitor. So simply if you join them together, so you will see this is resultant capacitor. And the total charge on this big capacitor is the sum of two individual capacitors. Means the charge has to be added in this case. So simply you have two small plates, you combine them. So you have one big plate. So in this case, capacitance will increase so you have to add capacitance so that's the reason we have got the formula c1 plus c2 for part c it is given to us two capacitors of capacitance 22 microfarads and 47 microfarads and a resistor of resistance 2.7 mega ohms are connected into the circuit as shown in figure 5.2 it is also given to us the battery has an EMF of 12 volts. For part C1, we need to show that combined capacitance of two capacitors is 15 micro volts. Now, first of all, we need to understand are these capacitors connected in series or they are connected in parallel? In this case, you can see these capacitors are connected end to end. So these two capacitors are connected in series. They are connected in series. So first thing we we can write down these two capacitors are connected in series so simply you can draw these two capacitors and these two capacitors are connected in series now the next thing we need to understand if the capacitors are connected in series how we can calculate the total capacitance this is like resistors connected in parallel so simply in this case we can write down 1 over CD has to be equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C so you can plug in values here we have 1 over 22 microfarads so we have 1 over 22 microfarads and we have 1 over 47 microfarads 47 microfarads we need to add these two together so here we can write down this one is the total capacitance now we just need to calculate value of CD so we can rewrite this one we can write down 1 over CD and if we take LCM on right 
side we can write down 22 times 47 so if we divide this one by 22 we will get 47 and if we divide this by 47 we will get 22 now we can flip this then we can write down ct ct will be equal to 22 times 47 divided by 22 plus 47 if we solve this one our final answer will be 15 and this one is 15 micro Farads because we are using units for capacitance microfarads and this is the final answer and this is what we need to calculate and this question has only one mark if you have got the right answer you will get one mark for the second part it is given to us the two way switch s is initially at position x so that the capacitors are fully charged we need to use the information in c1 to calculate the total energy stored in the two capacitors so in this case simply you need to understand these two capacitors the total capacitance is equal to 15 micro Farads. So simply we can replace these two capacitors with one single capacitor. So let me redraw the circuit. If you redraw this circuit in this circuit, you can replace this with one capacitor. So we can simply redraw C total. So this is our C total. And the EMF of this power supply is given that is equal to 12 volts. And this capacitor, total capacitance of this one is 15 microfarads. Now we need to calculate the total energy stored in this capacitor when this capacitor is fully charged in order to calculate energy stored total energy stored in this capacitor when this capacitor is fully charged we can simply use one half cv square value of c we have that is equal to 15 micro Farads and we have value of V that is equal to 12 volts. Now simply we need to put these numbers in calculator and we can calculate E total. E total in this case will be equal to 1.1 times 10 to minus 3 joules. And this is our final answer up to 2SF. Up to 2SF because this data has 2SF. So we have to follow the least number of SF in given data. So our final answer is 1.1 times 10 to minus 3 joules. And this question has two marks. The first mark if you have written this formula and the second mark is the answer mark if you have got the right answer you will get two marks so this is how marks will be awarded for the last part it is given to us the two way switch is now moved to position y means we move this switch from x to y now so this is how our circuit is connected if you look at this circuit now you will see in this case there is no power supply if there is no power supply and capacitor is charged capacitor will start discharging so in this case over capacitor will discharge for this question we need to determine the time taken for the potential difference across 22 microfarad capacitor to become 6.0 volt so we have to calculate time taken for this capacitor to discharge to 6.0 volts so simply imagine that it has some initial voltage across and then that voltage drops to 6.0 volts and we need to calculate time taken so this is what question is asking us we need to calculate time taken let's say time taken is equal to small t first of all we need to calculate value of v naught means the value of initial potential difference across this capacitor but we have already discussed that the total capacitance of these two capacitors is equal to 15 micro Farads. So simply we can write down this is equal to 15 microfarads. Now we need to understand when two capacitors they are connected in series, they have same value of Q. Q is same. So we can say Q is same. It simply means that Q same means that the Q total this is equal to Q on 22 microfarad equal Q on 47 microfarad because when capacitors are connected in series they have the same charge and the charge on 22 and charge on 47 microfarad is equal to Q T total charge let's try to calculate Q total now Q total simply will be equal to C total time the potential difference across these two capacitors we have value of c total that was equal to 15 micro 
fair odds and we have value of v across these two capacitors that is equal to 12. so this is how we can calculate q total let's try to calculate potential difference across this 22 micro farad capacitor so simply we can say v across 22 micro farad capacitor we have already said initially it is equal to v naught so this is value of initial potential difference across this capacitor and that one will be equal to the q total q total divided by the capacitance of 22 micro farad means 22 times 10 to minus 6 and q total is equal to q1 as well so simply we can plug in these values we have 15 times 10 to negative 6 times 12 and this is divided by 22 times 10 to minus 6 Six. If we solve this one, our final answer in this case will be equal to 8.2. So we will get value of potential difference across 22 microfarad capacitor. And this is the initial value of potential difference across 22 microfarad capacitor. For this question, we need to calculate the time taken for the voltage to drop from 8.2 to 6.0 across 22 microfarad capacitor. Now we have value of initial voltage voltage and we have value of final voltage so simply we can calculate time taken we have to use v as a function of time this is equal to v naught this is the formula for discharging circuit means for discharging capacitor v naught e to the power of minus t over rc vt is the final voltage that one is equal to 6.0 volts this is given v naught is the initial voltage that is equal to 8.2 e to the power of minus t this is what we need to calculate and rc is the time constant this is a little bit confusing maybe this will confuse you if you have not clear understanding of discharging capacitor let's try to understand how we can calculate tau time constant this is equal to rc r is the resistance in the discharging circuit in this case resistance is equal to 2.7 times 10 to 6 mean this one is over resistor in this discharging circuit now you need to consider the total capacitance of this charging circuit not the capacitance of this 22 microfarad capacitor so this c is 15 means the total capacitance 15 times 10 to minus 6 now if you multiply this 10 to 6 10 to minus 6 will be cancelled so 2.7 times 15 we will get this is equal to 40.2 so this is value of rc r you can simply say this is over time constant now we can plug in these values we have 6.0 that is equal to 8.2 times e to the power of minus t divided by 40.2 now we can take natural log on both sides before we take natural log we can further simplify we can write on 6.0 divided by 8.2 this is equal to e to the power of minus t over 40.2 now we can take natural log on both sides we will get 6.0 divided by 8.2 on this side we will get minus t because natural log of e is equal to 1 so this point you need to understand natural log of e is equal to 1 so we have minus t divided by 40.2 we need to find value of t so we can write down minus t in this case will be equal to natural log of 6.0 0 divided by 8.2 and we need to multiply this one with 40.2 if we solve this one our answer will be about 12.55 and we can write down this one up to 2sf 13 seconds we will get positive answer because if when you will solve this one your answer will be negative so negative negative will be cancelled so this is over final answer and this is how you can answer this question this question has three marks the first mark you will get if you have got the right value of final voltage right value of initial voltage across 22 microfarad capacitor you will get one mark and this is c mark and second c mark you will get if you have used this formula you will get second c mark
and the last mark is the answer mark. If you got the right answer, you will get three marks for this question. I'll see you in next video with another question from May June 2022, Paper 4, Variant 2.